Nathan here, helping you become a better jungler. For today's Challenger Jungle Series, we're going to be featuring Viego. And to help me learn Viego, I've got Perry joining me, who is a multi-season challenger over on the North American server. Last split, getting two accounts into the 1000 LP challenger mark. And is currently a semi-pro player for the NACL team, Cincinnati Fear. So let's get into the details, guys, and learn some Viego. All right, so Perry, Viego. You've been playing a lot of Viego so far this new split. It's your most played here, 18 games, 80% win rate. This is the game that we're going to be reviewing today. You're going to be talking through your thought process, 15, 5, 12. Let's start with, uh, I always say this is like the boring stuff. I love gameplay in my games, look at specific decision making, but let's just get it over and done with the runes and items. So um, this game specifically, so it looks like with all your Viego games, you sort of change up your builds here and there. What's the yeah. thought process of Viego builds right now? Is it like a stock standard, like really good mythic for him right now? Or what's the go with the builds? So right now, as it stands, I think for the build, you always want to go Kraken or Bork. Normally, I just go Kraken. It's just, it's easier, I think, to to, to understand the damage. Um, every single game, I'm going Kraken. And then after that, I go either Trinity Force or Sunder. Um the easiest one to build is just Sunder. It, it, it's just more survivability. You heal after you hit people, right? Sunder is just a decent item for Viego. Um, but if you want damage, you go try for Or Yeah, you go try first. Uh, after that, it's always just defensive items or Black Lever. So Wits End, Stance, um, Maw, or Black Lever is always a good item. Uh, but pretty much, you never want to over-index on damage after your second item. Like, never. You always want to get HP and defenses because you don't need more damage on Viego. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how, how Viego go goes. Like, you always want damage first item, then some survivability, then even more survivability, and then you're just chilling on Viego. Got it. So it's really simple thought process. Your first couple of items get damage, and then after that just become unkillable so you can get resets. Is that sort of the thought process? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Well, let's actually look at some... Whoops, let's just do a ranked solo here and not look at your arena Viego games. <laughs> um, so let's look at a different build. So this game you went Iceborne. Oh, this, this was Top Viego, so... Ah, uh, it's Top Viego. Whoops, ignore that one. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is a Trinity Force. So why would you go Trinity Force this game over Divine Sundra? Yeah, so when you look at other champs here, they're all very, very squishy champions. Um, not a single one of them has probably over like 2k HP, right? Maybe Riven, but they're all super squishy, so... So some more damage doesn't hurt. But you see right after, like, I'm going defensive. I got a Hex Shrinker, I got a Chain Vest, and I got, like, you know, I'm just buying stats. Um, so... So would you be able to hear yeah. this Death Dance components here? Is that I, think, I, I, think, I, I, I think I misclicked the Cloth Armor, and I was buying Death Dance, but yeah. And then, for example, this game here, you're against a Rel Jungle here. So is this the is it the Rel while you're building Sundra here, Kraken into Sundra? Yeah, just just more survivability is like is is better here. Like they, they also have like, um, like some tankier champs. Rails tankier. Like Yasuo is like for sure gonna be in my face. Um, I just personally like to survive more. I've always been a Sunder fan, so um, I if I get a Sunder game, I would just go Sunder. Yeah. And then this game here, same thought process. They're all super squishy. So this is a Triforce game, right? You're against a Kindred, yep. Jax, Ari. Okay, so that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. And so, it looks like you yeah. do really like the Black Lever third. So if you were to say like a, like, let's say someone's beginning to, to play Viego, would you say a really good baseline build would be this? Yes, this game is a, is a good um, show for baseline items. Okay, so this, um, is, this is just like, like, let's say again, someone's picking up Viego, like, okay, just build Kraken first every game, then just build yeah. Triforce. Because sometimes uh, it, it gets a bit tricky. It's like, okay, how do I know? Because let's say you're a newer player, you know, tanky champs versus you know squishy champs like yeah, it's sort of just like a, a stock standard build i always look to recommend to people so would you recommend the triforce or the sundra um i think if if you are new it's easier to play with sunder personally that's a better question um, it's easier to play okay with sundra yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just easier to just go sunder it's i think more consistent over time yeah so just cracking sunder black cleaver and then tanky items defensive items. items. Yeah. Tanky items. Tanky bruiser items. And so that would be, just so we can get some, some examples, that would be like Sterax. What yep, else Sterax you know? is a good one. There's a Maw over there. 
Would you class um, classify Wits End as a? Yeah, yeah. You get some get, like get some defensive stats. Forty MR is perfectly chill for defensive stats. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, looking at all your games here, the games are basically over by three items anyway. So, <laughs> so you can pretty yeah. much just get these, and these are pretty expensive items here. Dude. Like if you're getting Kraken into um, Sundara Triforce and then Black Lever, like you know, the game should be pretty much over by that point. So for sure, for sure. Um, okay, and then the next uh, question I always ask: What is your ideal first base? Are you always just looking for thirteen hundred gold for the Noon Quiver? So ideal is yes, you always want a noon quiver, but it's also fine to just get um, recurvo first back seven hundred gold. Um, the you 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 really want either recurvo because you're passive, you apply the fifteen extra damage on hit, um, so you get a little bit more damage and attack speed is not not like it's good, it's good on Viego. Um, you can also see like I always go, I almost always go alacrity nowadays. Um, they nerfed tenacity a while back, so unless they have a lot of tena like a lot of CC, I always go alacrity. Um, and if they do have a lot of CC and they have some magic damage, I go mercs. Um, but otherwise, alacrity is just that much better than tenacity, for from my understanding, especially in solo queue. Um, so, yeah, attack speed is really strong in Viego. But again, that's not an ideal first base. You would say Noon Quiver, uh, and then yes, worst case the scenario question. is yes. Recovery. Noon, Noon Quiver is the perfect base. Yeah. 1300 gold is perfect. All right, so let's go back to the the build of the game that we're going to review today. So yeah, so you go um, Green Smite every single game? I would say yes, unless I know I'm going to build damage. If I'm building damage, I like Blue Smite just because I'm going to be killing people. So Blue Smite to get faster, to kill people faster. And then you got ideal first base here, Noon Quiver, and the Kraken Slayer, and then you built Ninja Tarbs because you're against, I guess, 4 AD here. Yeah, 4 AD. And then Sundra because of... I mean, is there is there many tanky champs in this game? Uh, my question is, why would not Triforce this game? Um, so another thing I forget to mention is, if you look at our champs, we actually don't have any tanks, I right? See. And you, need, you want to be tankier if you don't have as much frontline. Because someone is a frontline in a, in a standard fight, um, and Sunder just makes you a little bit tankier with the healing. So, yeah. Got it. And then, yeah, you got Black Cleaver third, as always, and then you went Sterax into Gargoyle. So I guess that's another another defensive item. Is that yeah. something you build often? I mean, this is a really defensive item. I don't see it that often in here. But is that yeah, I, this versus? game specifically, you can see they have Zed, they have Karthus, they have, like, Pike. People who will, like one shot your hp at towards the end so any sort of defenses um that like, like shields i should say are like very very beneficial because if zed gets its full combo off and i hit gargoyles it literally doesn't matter because i'll shield everything um so that's why that's why you see i have sterex and gargoyles here instead of like death stance or instead of what's end um both of these items just make it so i'm not getting assassinated you can survive long enough to get your resets i guess yes yes exactly and then skill order, so it looks like you max Q first, and then E, and then W last. Really simple yep. there. Very simple, simple standard. And do game. you switch these runes at all, or is this permanently the same runes every game? For the most part, just you just run these runes. Unless they have a lot of CC, you can switch to ten Tenacity, but this is just the easiest thing to go every single game. Question here is: Would coup de gras make? Well, why not coup de gras? Where people are like, okay, well, I just want to one shot someone. I can kill them quicker if they're low HP rather than me low HP. Why last stand over coup de gras? Um, generally speaking, I think coup de gras just is is more like over time, over ten games, you're going to get more value. Um, but like, yes, if you're building full damage. Uh, you're not even trying to build like defensive items towards the towards the end of your build. Then yeah, probably last stand is better. But I personally don't think over overthinking that is is worth your time. Personally. Yeah, good, love it. I, I, I'm a big proponent of not overthinking runes and items, Barry. So yeah. I'm, I'm on board with you on yeah. that. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff now. The gameplay. So uh, we'll we'll get sort of get into champ identity a bit later on i just want to look at just the early game plan here just keeping it really simple here what do you sort of think about in the early stage or what do you think about specifically this game here yeah so if you go back to a tab screen so we can see all the champions um it's it's very simple jungle how jungle should be played you look at all your lanes right we have shaco we have aatrox um and then we have ari zed and, and samira kaisa nautilus pike and this lane is the mo lane i am looking at the most uh, the bot lane, because you can see that Nautilus and Pike, they want to fight. And so does Samira and Kaisa. 
These are both champions that really, really want to fight. So that's the first thing I see. The easiest thing to see is, okay, who really wants to fight, right? And that's bot lane. And then I, and then I have to, to double check, hey, does top lane want to fight? Does mid lane want to fight? Um, and if not, then it's very easy. It's very simple where I'm trying to go to here. It's bot lane. Because my top laner, realistically, neither of them are going to kill each other, I don't think. Shaco's just going to, you know, do his, do his thing on Shaco. Mid lane is going to just farm. Ari should have push. Um, but realistically, no one's killing each other until level 6. The people who are going to fight is bot lane. So it's very simple. I'm going to path to bot lane. Now, some games, you have teams who... You have, you have champs who don't want to fight. And that's where you always want to path to Pryo. Um... So, bot lane here, Samira and Nautilus, they don't get Pryo into Kai'Sa Pike, um, because Kai Kai'Sa outranges the Samira. Uh, but pretty much, you just use your best judgments every single game. Who wants to fight? Path to the people who want to fight. If no one wants to fight, path to priority. Path to the people who have shove in the lane. This makes your life very, very easy. Um, but is every that single sort of the game. Looking, is that because you're looking to get a full clear every game? You don't want to get yes, invaded? exactly, exactly. So there's two reasons why you always want to path to prior. One, if the enemy jungler paths to the exact same lane that you path to, you have many many options to invade, to counter gank, to have your support move with you or your top laner move with you for the invade. You could also full clear. Your teammates can ward. It just makes the game so much easier if you're always thinking. Who has priority? Who has shove? Who can help me um, at all times? It makes your life easy. Um, so it just gives you a lot of options. So my question here is going to be now is obviously this path has been really popular these days. Like the Red Krugs Raptors into level three gank bot. Right. What's the difference between uh, doing that and then just starting top and full clear and top to bot? Is that a Viego champ identity specific thing? So I would say any champ, most champs actually now can do Raptors very easily with the jungle pet changes. Raptors leash um, and start, yeah. Yeah, um, but for many, for, for 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 this path specifically, I wouldn't say it has to do with the champs. I would say like it depends on how fast you need to get to bot lane. So let's say I'm I'm racing against the enemy jungler. Both junglers start the top side, so we're we're racing to bot lane to to can gank faster. Realistically, you're going to meet at the exact same time and it's going to be a 3v3. But if I start the bot side and he starts the top side, I'm faster to bot lane. So if I'm racing against the clock to get to bot lane first, then I would always start my bot side. The problem with this path is towards the lighter parts of the game, your clear is now like backwards. Your mm. bot camps are spawning and then your top camps, like you're, you're going to be pathing to up, like towards the later part of the game um, because your bot camps are spawning first. Right, so after I recall, my bot camps are going to be spawning first. I will go to my bot camps that go up. So that's the problem with this path. So you like to keep it simple here. It just looks like your top and yours mindset is I'm going to full clear and Kalfa yes. is going to full clear. Is that yes. the idea? It's very, very simple. Um, if you can get a simple game, just don't overthink it and just yeah. play your simple simple clear. It's and very, you just want to and again, use level four clear is what you recommend. Like again, someone's starting the champion. Like let's say, let's say people don't know where priority is or people are going to fight and they just... Do you have a preference between full clear and from blue or red? Um, generally speaking, just full clear to bot lane. If, if you're unsure, game. okay, no yeah. What. If you're unsure where to go, just clear towards bot lane. Just yeah. go clear towards bot lane. So if you're on the um, other side of the map here, you'd be starting red and you just full clear. Red yeah. Krugs, and Raptors, I'm just... yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. So talking a little about fundamentals with the clear, uh, is there anything we need to know for Viego here, or is it? So is it simple? Um, like for the most camp. part, not really. You just want to be able to kite the camp correctly. Um, use, use the leash ranges as best as you can. One thing that is good for Viego Clear to know is uh, your your W is an auto attack reset. So you auto W auto. Um, pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. Make sure you land your Q on all the wolves here. You pull the camps. Auto W auto. He's using the leash range to just yep. be efficient. Do you put two points in Q if you want to clear faster, or is E just better? So with the changes in the jungle, where you can't cl you can't clear like blue and grab at the same time, E is almost always going to be faster. Yeah. So right here, something to note is I skip my red buff here for two reasons. One, my if, if nothing happens this game, I would clear my Raptors into my Krugs right away. So when I recall and I clear back down, 
they'll spawn at the exact same, like, they'll spawn very synchronized. If I did my red buff, it would take 20 more seconds for my crooks to spawn. Another thing is I actually have my red buff for a much longer time um, on the map now, because I did my red buff last. Okay, so what are you thinking now? Your bot lane's just died? Yeah. So my bot lane died. I'm very depressed because, hey, I path bot, and my bot lane's dead again. So okay. this game looks really messed up. I finished my full clear. There's five deaths in this game. Yeah. Um, but the game is fine. I got my full clear off. I, my game is completely fine. And that's one thing you need to understand as jungle. You cannot fall into what's going on with your, your laners. You play your game, and you make sure that you're not falling behind. Um, because you can get sucked in by your teammates inting, and you cannot do that. If you clear, you're gaining gold, you're gaining EXP, and you're putting yourself in a position to where if you play fights well, you can win. Otherwise, there's no winning. It's just coin flip. Mm. So, don't get sucked in by bot lane fighting like crazy. If it's not going to be a, like a good play, like a, above average play, don't do it, just clear. Clearing is easy and yeah. guaranteed. So, your sort of your mindset is... I don't care how much chaos has happened in this game against so many people, so many deaths already. You're confident. As long as I get strong myself, I'm going to win the game in mid-game fights. Is that the thought process? Yes, yes. At, at the very least, I have a chance to win the mid-game fights. Yeah. You know, I might mess up, but I, I can't guarantee that me going bot lane here gets me anything. Like, realistically. Um, so, because like, they're already dead, there's so much death already, Like I want to make uh, the best guaranteed plays I can to win the game, pretty much. And if I, can, if I don't see any guaranteed plays, I'm just going to clear. Right, so you're afraid of Carthus being here at all? What's the thought process going for this crab rather than the top crab? Um, if Carthus is here, I would just leave. Is the idea? I would, I would just leave. Like I, I think getting either crab here in this game is going to be very hard, in the first place because everyone's dead. You know, like and like no one's really getting prio, no one's really like winning their lanes. Um, I think they're the Carthus recalled, or he uh, he did something fishy, so I was able to just sneak the crab. Um, one thing in solo queue is if you can just get on the crab right at 3.30 as it spawns, there's a high chance that you'll just one-shot it because they're so squishy. Yeah, you were also able to, because you cleared really efficiently here, you were able to do this path and you still had a smite left over as well. I mean, yeah. is this partly because I think the Shaco leech, which is yes. pretty, pretty yes, rare, yes, right? Like, is this yes. common? Like, the I don't think this is common, is it? This is not too common. I think I yeah. would be on the crab at 3:30 still, but to have this much extra time to go to be able to ward and be able to do this this like sequence of path is not normally common. Um, you can even see I wasted some time here with my clicks. Um. Right. So yeah. So yeah. I don't know what Carthus did. I guess maybe he was there for maybe a counter gank. He thought you might be going to gank, so he slowed down his camps. Or, I don't know, did he recall? Oh, actually, yeah, he full cleared and then recalled and bought items. And then went, and then went so, back like, that's bot. like, yeah, he went back to bot crab, yeah. I see. So one thing you notice that what I'm doing here is the guaranteed play I got from mid is the pressure I applied and I forced the Zed to recall here. So, yeah. um, along with that, I put myself on the top side to where I can, you know, get another crab. Because I saw, as I saw Cartus spotted in the, um, in the bot side. So always just trying to make, make your play to as guaranteed as you can. Uh, it's pretty much a good mindset coming into jungle. Alright, well they got a really deep ward in your jungle there. I don't know when the top laner did that. Um, it was the Zed. After I pushed their, their mid laner out, he, he went into my jungle. The top uh, side, so. Okay, I didn't see that. Yeah. Alright, so your mindset here is, are you just thinking about getting 1300 gold for your Noon Quiver? What's the idea of the yep. second full clear here? So I'm going to clear my Grump and Wolves here, I believe, and then recall. Okay. Um, if not... It means I'm just trying to full clear and greed everything, and when I come off the map, I'm going to want to fight. But I think I do recall here. Um, you can see my position. I'm I'm ready to recall. Yeah, um, this is the perfect amount of gold as we can see. It's going to perfectly time it. So, see, so yeah, I guess the intention here is I'm looking for 1300 gold. I want my ideal first base. Yeah. All right, so we're level five here. So, is this what you would say? Even though so your team's right now one and six, is this yeah. what you would call a Viego successful Viego early game? Um, for sure. I mean, I think any jungler getting both crabs and then your second, like, yeah, 1300 back is normally just a really insane back. Um, for Viego though, like, yes, this is a crazy, crazy good game. Uh, very successful. 
And as you can see, like I'm not running to dragon, I'm not running to a lane, I'm just I'm just clearing my camps. Um one thing you see here is I'm getting information. I wanna see if he does dragon. Because many solo queue junglers, they will just pull dragon randomly. So getting wards on dragon is very, very useful. You can't trust your teammates to ward, so you just you don't need sweeper. Just, just wards are very, very powerful. Um, yeah, so a lot of people switch out to sweeper, even off their first base and stuff. So you like to hold your your. When do you switch to sweeper? Do you ever switch to sweeper? Probably towards the mid game, 10, 10 to fifteen minutes, and anywhere around that range is generally when I think sweep, switching to sweeper is better. Sometimes I forget I have a habit of doing it because for competitive gameplay, it's good mm. to have sweeper. Mm. But in solo queue, wards are very very useful. So as you can see here, my mid and bot have prio, so I'm I'm making sure that I am hovering their lane to see if the jungler wants to gank. And another thing is I want this bot crab. So bot crab is coming up, and you can see the little uh, the silver or the gray uh, <laughs> the gray thing in the river. Um, it's coming up soon. So I want to make sure that I'm hovering my my mid and my bot lane here. I'm not going to top side. Top lane just died. I'm hovering these two lanes, and like I've talked about earlier. With their prios, they're going to move. So let's say Cartus had bot camps here, and I wanted to play for them. I would only want to invade his bot side because my bot lane and my mid lane have prio. So this is a perfect time to just go and pressure the river, pressure the enemy jungler to see if he's here. And luckily, he kind of just gave me a free kill here. Um, let's say my bot and mid did not have prio. I would either recall or go to my top side. I would just not even interact with the lanes with no prio. That's... Yeah. So that's how important priority changes your decision making. Like, because you have priority here, you're able to just... Okay, I also want to get specific as well. So what... Because a lot of people don't understand what it means by pressuring. You're just walking into his jungle. Do you know that his camps are up right now? Or are you just doing this because you're like, I have priority. I can just do whatever I want. I'm just going to walk into his bot side. Yeah, so like the, the pressure I'm applying here is like, like if Karthus is not here, that means both of my mid and bot lane... Well, my, but not, not bot lane in this case, but my mid laner at least can like hit the turret in front of their mid laner's face. Normally, if if, you, if someone's hitting the turret in the enemy's face, they're going to get ganked, they're going to get pressured 1v1, something bad will happen. So that's the kind of pressure I'm putting here. I'm actually not trying to get anything insane here. I'm only here to see if the enemy will int or to secure my mid laner or my bot laner like some sort of advantage. So luckily this guy showed up here and I get a free kill, but realistically all I'm trying to do is just push the jungler out of the river if he is in the river and get the bot crab here and let's say no one was in the bot side here i could have also pulled the dragon here You'd so no matter what if no one was there yes if if there was no fight here this whole time i would have potentially fought the dragon depending on what conditions i saw but with priority you can make really good decisions it's very easy to play the game with priority After I saw that Nautilus uh, gameplay, I was very concerned. All right, so now the question is going to be is, uh, Perry, why don't you start dragging here? What's going on here? Right, okay. So I think I do end up going to it, yes. Oh, okay. um, but I wanted some info first, and I want level 6 first. So you all, again, it's the same thought process. I want to guarantee my level 6 before anything. Um, and I was just, I was like one camp away, Crab is there, so... And let's say, you know, we lost this fight. At the very least, I would have cleared the crab. I'm not going to lose dragon and the crab. Um, if they, like, potentially wanted to come fight me from base, because Karthus died very early on. Um, so. If you want to pause real quick, I can talk about this dragon take. Yeah. Um, so, one thing, a common mistake is we're prioritizing objectives. I would say every single elo up until diamond probably does it. Over prioritizing dragons, losing their minds, freaking out. I want dragon. But you can see my top side here. Blue, Gromp, and Wolves have spawned. Right? So if their Karthus bolted to my top side and took my entire top side, I would be down so much EXP this game. I would put myself in a position to where I'm going to be down a level the entire game if the jungler plays decently. So dragons end up being very bad if the enemy jungler is good. But the big thing here is this game is not going good anyway. So a dragon in the early game means a lot mentally and literally because they're not going to get so as fast. Um, so if you can get away with an early dragon, you should. But I will say, I will emphasize, do not prioritize early dragons. Do not. 
because it ends up bad. It, it ends up creating bad habits. It ends up making you like overthink. You know, is this dragon good or bad? I, I just personally feel like the conditions are very hard to identify if the good if there's a good dragon pool or not. Um, so generally speaking, if I were playing this game, an even game, I would recall after the crab and I would go straight to my top side and play a natural game. The decision I just made here is a very like I'm because fucked in this behind. game. Yeah. I need any sort of early objective because I'm behind. If, if you're ahead, you never need to pull objectives because they can't do the objective in your face when you're ahead. I would just play a natural game, clear my camps, then do something afterwards. Clear my camps, then do an objective afterwards. But as you can see, all my camps are spawning here. So I really wanted to get to my top side. Um, so yeah. All right, so are you assuming you've lost your top camps now? Is that why you're going for this bot gank? Or is it, again, you're in a different mindset because you're really far behind. You just want to get some kills here or something. Yeah, I, I want to see, you know, the ball has been scrapping like crazy. I want to see if, like, this is a potential kill. If my top side is gone, I need to get some sort of advantage in the bot side. So that's kind of why I'm here. Um, I think Karthus cleared, like, differently this game. Uh, it looks so like I don't cleared, think he's in my he top side. Bot. I think he cleared. He yeah. actually started. So it looks like what his early game path was. He went bot to top and then he reset. Didn't do yeah. the crab, went down here, yeah. and then that's what happened here, right? Yeah, um, that, that, instead of that's thinking what I, that we, we went top to bot. I, I think at some point in this game, I understood that that's what he did. So that's why you can see I'm, I am I, I have a good feeling that he's not in my top side, pretty much. So very, very like lucky that I was able to make, get this gank, gank off. I mean, I have Nautilus, so it's pretty chill. Um, as you can see, like I'm, I'm very concerned of dying here. Dying as a jungler when it, all my camps are up is very, very game losing. So you can see, like, I checked if someone was trying to dive me, if something bad was going to happen with my Kaisa W. So you see I'm holding tab, collecting information, seeing what to buy, you know, um, seeing if there's anything I want to change with my build. And at this point, I have six camps up, and, like, there is a herald, but I have six camps up. So if conditions align where I can do this herald, sure, getting objectives when you're behind is good. But again, if I just full clear top to bot here, I will be in a good position for myself to carry this game. Yeah, and it definitely looks like you're gonna need to carry this game with, uh, yeah, currently the the state of the game here. Yes, yes. All right, so you're skipping a lot of camps here to maybe look for. Okay, so you are setting the herald here. Yes, I think. I saw the pike do this this shenanigans mid. Um, I feel like maybe I can. I think I think what I'm thinking of is my my Shaku just used ult for fun pretty much. So I wanted to try and and make use of what my Shaku just did. Is the thought process here? Mid died again, so I'm just catching his wave. Uh, afterwards, I really want to clear all my camps. So you can see here, you can even see my face. I'm very tilted here because yeah. everyone is dead. My Balin has no prio. My bot side is literally gone right it's now. Gone. And if yeah. I, if I walk into my bot side, I will die. die. Yeah. So you can see I'm, I'm not going to my bot side here because I'm not risking a death. I'm looking for opportunity elsewhere on the map. So that's one thing that you'll see junglers do a lot. It's like they'll go and kill themselves in the bot side here. But you see, I'm waiting here. I'm I'm sitting here because if the bush is warded, I'm sitting out of the vision. So I'm literally just waiting for the perfect opportunity. There we go. And we get ourselves a kill, I believe. I would hope so. Yes, I had a shutdown. As you can see, I'm making good decisions even though this game is messed up. It's 6 to 12 and I have 4 of the kills. Um... So you don't even care. You're just taking all the farm this game. Like you're just taking. I, I gave him. Away. I gave him the cannon. I gave him the cannon. But yes, okay. I want the resources for myself. Yes. Yeah. So you're really your mindset. This game is. I need to be the full carry of this game as Viego. Yes. Is this what it is most games, or is it just a unique one for this game? I, I I will say if 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 your games do look like this as Viego, it's very depressing because sometimes you have Enchanter and like like well Shaco Top is a good example. Like no one is really good with Viego here. Um. So there's some comps that are not good with Viego, and if you're the sole carry as Viego and your comp is really bad, then it's depressing because it's hard to solo carry games as Viego. I will say. Um, 
So oh, generally speaking, a like bit about draft then, I guess. So what does oh, a great Viego game look like then? Any sort of CC with your team. Any sort of frontline and CC. Nautilus is a perfect example. He has both. Good CC with your ult, good CC with your Q, his, his auto attack, and he's like beefy enough to like, if someone kills him, I can kill someone at the same time. Ari has a good, good like dashes, she can go Everfrost, she can get her charm going. Um, she wants to help her jungler out. Um, top lane, nah, you, same thing, you want a tank, you want someone like Orn, you want someone um, like Cho'Gath, I don't know, some, some weird, those weird champions that are just tanky and have some CC. That is a perfect lineup. You can have any ADC with those two champs. If you have Nautilus, Ari, Orn, I'm ecstatic about the game playing Viego. But there's some games where you have like a Lowy top, and then you have um, like like Zed mid, and then you have Janna and Kaisa. And I'm just like playing Viego, and I'm really, really depressed because like it, it's it's just hard to play games like that. I will say. You know, when you think of when you put it that way, Pierre, I'm just thinking, wait, that's just like a really good comp in general, like it's for any jungler, <laughs> isn't it? Like uh, that is true. Know? Yeah. Like I mean, I will on say top is awesome. Dude, no one plays on top in solo key, You know what I mean? Okay, that you, you got me there. I will say, like, like Viego, I, I, I feel like is you only need one of those three champions. So if okay. I have, if I had Ari here and like a bad top, bad support, I would be okay about the game. I would feel all right. Um, I think Viego is a very good champion if your teammates have any sort of CC. But it's very hard to guarantee that. I would say, like, I don't know. Some players are really messed up in solo queue. That's why Viego, I feel like, is not in the best positions because it's somewhat reliant on what your teammates pick, um, which you don't really want to be in solo queue, unfortunately. All right, so you're never walking back to your bot side because you know all those camps are probably gone. So you're just sort of just trading top here and just looking for split map plays or yep. looking fishing for some kills. So one thing you see here is I am playing the fog line as perfect as I can. I'm not showing too early. I'm not doing anything too early. Yeah, a lot of junglers that I'll see right now, Perry, is that they would, uh, lower elo junglers, they would be going to try and kill the Zed now. But you're waiting for him to be more in a vulnerable position or to hit the tower is before you go. Yeah, so I mean, th this, yeah, like if this guy is playing like this already in the first place, you know, like his mindset is this game is kind of won to him, you know, like the score is 7 to 14, like he's piss chilling, everyone's winning, he's going to feel vulnerable, he's going to make mistakes here. Um, so just not showing on vision, not scaring him away, uh, I'm kind of just like making, like making him feel safe. Uh, and one another thing is you always want to wait if you can 2v1 this guy. So my, my Shaco, like with the time where I wanted to go earlier, my Shaco wasn't around me, so I just waited. Um, so you always want to, like, if you have a numbers advantage, you always want to play with a numbers advantage. I sort of want to get to talking about E usage with Viego. Um, I don't know, maybe, is it best to talk about it here or later in the game? I would say here's not a bad time to look at it. Yeah, um, I sort of want to ask, like, why not E earlier? Like, what's, what's the thought process with E in here? How do you view E as Viego? What does good E usage look like? Okay, so E, in most cases, is is very useful for the move speed and the fog. Um, in actual fights, like, the attack speed that you get from your E is not always useful, I will have to say. I will say it's really good to chase people and to, like, to like um, you know, play in, in, in the fog line. Um, but here, if you E too early, you don't have a tool to chase him at the end. Um, so you always normally want to save your E if it's an actual, like, scrap. If this guy, like, ults me, for example, and I have my E, it'll be much harder for him to, like, land his Qs and stuff if I'm moving around in my E. Um, and alternatively, if you, like, hard fights me here and I use my E too early, I don't have the attack speed. So just saving your abilities in general on any champion is very useful, but especially on Viego with your E and your W. Okay, yeah, so maybe we'll be able to see better f examples later in the game of, yeah, how to use your E and stuff. But so it sounds like the general advice is you want to be holding your E as, lo as long as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Is hitting W as Viego, like, game-changing? Is it really important? Like, if you miss a W, can you lose a game as Viego? Oh, absolutely. Um... That's, yeah. You you need to land your your W on Viego, otherwise, um, fights will go very very hard. Also.
All right, so you start with E here. So do you start with E here because you just want to get this kill quickly, or like what's the thought process here? So if you look at the position I'm in right here, I'm very, very far away from him, right? So I will never be able to land my W if this guy instantly starts walking away from me, but my E makes it so I can actually get in range to W him and deal as much damage as I can. So the best way I would look at it is my E, I normally use my E as a tool to catch up to people. To get um, in range to W them. Yes, exactly. Got it. All right, yeah, so it's really important to note as well, um, just for the people watching this, you know, you have not been to your bot camps for the last like three, four minutes here, you know, so yeah. there is there is plays. You don't always have to just full clear top to bot every single game, you know, so it's not like you're like an AFK farming jungler. You're like impacting the map, looking to get kills. Yeah. Um, when you're, when, when, a, when a lane is doing this bad, I think they have, like, they have 12 deaths right now. Um, they're one and 12. You don't want to interact with that lane at all. Um, it, you just want to pray that maybe your the, the, the laner on the other side of the map is not that bad. Um, he's not doing great. He's 0-2-2, two and two, but it's so, it's better than interacting with the 1-12 and 12 lane. It's better. Um, so every play I'm going to make is going to be around the Ari or the Shaco, pretty much, and not with my bot lane. Is there an element, though, Perry, is that if you, if the enemy laner or bot lane is really far ahead, that means that same same thing that you sort of were talking about, the Zed, where they're going to put themselves in a more vulnerable position, which will allow you to clean up. Is that an element, a factor, or are you thinking more just big picture, like, I just need to play to my stronger members? Um, I think that you'll see, you, you, we will see that these guys play very, very, like, like, not normally later on in the game because they think they're so ahead. They checked but, out, yeah. Um... I need gold to kill them, right? So I need to make some good plays first before I can kill these guys. So I want to get as much gold as I can with the Herald that I got, with these kills that I'm getting on the top side, before I try and kill these guys in the bot lane. It will be probably like 10 to 15 minutes before I interact with the, bot the enemy bot lane. Yeah. Because as we can see here, I mean, you, again, you're like, a, even after all this, you base and you go straight back top. So you spend your gold and you go straight back top. You like give dragon and everything you just deploying yes, straight back top and again your mindset is i'm gonna get lots of free gold here i can't get any gold bot because their bot lane's so strong is that the thought exactly. process Ex yeah that's exactly right um because i find people, people have a really hard time of of it junglers because they junglers mindset perry is always to order parts like if i reset on this side of the map i've got to go to this side of the map because that's what we train ourselves to do right with our camps but you're sort of yeah. like adapting to you know the game state what specifically how can i get as much gold on myself as, as possible yeah, so I, I mean, one thing that's like that's neat about this game is I was able to get advantages in the other side of the lane. I will say there are some games where like this Aatrox is playing super safe, he's not fighting, mm. he's not doing this, and I can't get anything. So what I would do here is I would go to the top side still, do the top crab, do my gromp, do everything as fast as possible, and just keep doing that, and just keep farming. Like that's all you can really do in messed up games like these. You can also see he typed in chat, what is this man? Because I've gone top 10 different times in the last yeah. <laughs> five this minutes. This is good. Anyway, it's just, just going to, again, show it's like Because it, if Atrox was to actually look at this game from your perspective, what you're doing here makes perfect sense, right? Mm -hmm. But this is even just going to, going to, you know, laners have actually a really poor understanding of jungle and, like, win conditions in jungle. This, guy, this is a challenger. This is, you know, this is a challenger game that Perry's playing in here, and the Aatrox is still saying this. So it's, like, it's very e obvious. Like, again, I reckon Aatrox, if he reviewed this game, he could be like, oh, okay, it makes sense why he's going to me. It's the OVA's only option. But in yeah. the game, people get really emotional, and they're not logical, and you can tilt them like this, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure this Aatrox was not having fun. And the same way, I mean, I mean, if you are the jungler in my position here, if you're playing this game, you know, Getting emotional is very, very easy. When you see your buy-in have this many deaths, they have more deaths than the time in the game, you normally don't feel good about the game. Uh, so keeping my head cool, honestly, was a challenge. I will say it's it's very reasonable to be tilted here, but you won't win if you're tilted, I will say. That's good advice, Barry, in, ge in general. Yes, keeping your emotions, it is difficult. Yeah. No one's perfect. No one's a monk on the rift, but it's just important to manage those emotions. And again, I guess I guess a toolkit that I always talk about is you're always going to be thinking about what's next? What's next? Like, again, what's like you, next, already, right? you know, you already know what's going on. Like, you're like, okay, I'm just going to get farm. I'm going to carry this game. You're probably, you're probably subconsciously repeating to yourself in this game. You've probably played these games before. I'm a 5 0 Viego. I know I can win this game in the mid game. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, a big thing about this game is. 
as useless as my Balian can be, he's playing Nautilus. If he's he playing an Enchanter, it, it would be much harder to win this game. Mm. So, I would say I got lucked out with the 10 death support playing Nautilus. So again, one thing here is I, I think I'm like 10 gold off my item, uh, 1500. So I can recall here, but the same thing applies to where like, I my item advantage won't change the game. If I can find an enemy inting here, like if the enemy top winner is hitting this third here, I'm ready to kill him. So I before I'm insta recalling and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm just gonna back. I'm ready to punish the enemy for making potential mistakes before I'm recalling here. So you're putting yourself in a position while you're recalling to just in case the enemy ints, you're putting you're getting yes, closer to the lane yes. or something like that. Yes, That's I'm a getting really as good close to recalling. Yeah. Yes, um, because the, you you the only way you can win these games is if they make mistakes and they will make mistakes. Every single challenger, like the fact that I'm able to win this game when you look at it at this position is crazy, right? Because everyone on the enemy team, they're challenger players. It's there's Dave Mon on Pike right here, you know, like these guys are very very high elo players. Um, they, they will know make how to mistakes. Win games. They know how to close out games, but they're still going to make mistakes, I guess. Yes, absolutely. They, they still want to make mistakes here. Um, yeah, this guy is. The, the, what's going on here has just made me lose my mind a little bit. I was like, wow. All right, so it looks like Ari has not done a good job of controlling emotions. Wow, look at the surrender. It almost goes through this yes, game. As well yes, yes. I, I, I think Pink Ward was my legend here and, and just did not vote. Um, wow. But right here, you finally see me. I have two items now. I have I have like some numbers. We're finally trying to get this guy killed. He has flash, unfortunate. So. So then tracking flashes. Then is that a big big thing you think about as Viego's always well? like? Is now your thought process in these fights is okay? Kaisa no flash. She's a priority target, or is she oh. still still too slippy with her R? No, absolutely. You'll see. Um, I mean, especially with Viego, because you're playing for resets, right? You need to track flashes. It's a hundred percent necessary skill, and um, I think you'll see that I start. I, I'm I'm very aware that this Kaisa has no flash for the rest of the game, or for the like for the rest of the five minutes. Um, yeah. So nothing nothing went great, but I did get his flash. So it's like it's like the blame is still playable, right? I'm still in an okay position. We did an FF. Luckily, no one FF. So I'm. I'm making the best plays I can. And you can see, now the top side is the area where I cannot interact with. Um, because they clear my top side, they're doing the Herald. And the funny thing here is I even say, like, maybe the enemy Karthus comes. And there he is, he shows up, he wants to camp. Um, and getting away with, like, kills like this, they're very, very game-changing. Because yeah, it's, it's really a boring. mental advantage, it's gold advantage, it's, it's, there's so many things that go on here. Um, and I guess it's the same thought process here again. It's like, okay, well, as you said, you keep saying, okay, well, this is not my area. We're so behind. I'm just going to keep trading the other side of the map, seeing what options, either take their camps or, again, you had a really good read game sense here that Carthus would be here. Yeah. Um, it's exactly right. You, you just got to play away from where the enemy is playing um, when, when they're the strong. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, sometimes you can be behind and still fight them. Not this game. I'm down 10,000 gold probably on my, on my team, so... You actually see here that um, I'm I have a teammate with me and now I Nautilus is somewhat close. I'm looking at where he is in, in proximity to me, um, so I actually have people here with me. I'm about to recall, but then I decide, you know what? Maybe maybe he does this, and there he is. There he goes. He uses his E, he uses his Q like that. Maybe we could win this fight. I have two items. If I play this fight decently, maybe it's workable. And luckily for us, we we did it. We did it. We got some more gold back. I'm not saying the game is won here, but getting this gold in this position is is very, very game-changing when you're down so much gold. But you'll see again here, like, I'm ready to catch these guys making mistakes. And here he is again, making mistakes. Wow. Um, yeah, so I, don't, I sort of want to talk about the fighting with Viego here. Is there much you can talk about here, or is it just... I mean, obviously you have challenger mechanics here, Paris. You're very good at this champion. Is there a way you can sort of explain, like, like what you're doing with how you're thinking about your W, E, and your auto attacks? I mean, obviously it's all happening very quick, but let's look at this fight again. Yeah, let's look. So, you can see here instantly I'm channeling my E. Instant two things, e, yep. right? Playing with Fog and getting into the fight as fast as possible. And this side of the map, I will get the attack speed from my E. Um, so it, it, it's all, it all works out. 
dodging his Q, right, his, his big Q, very important here, playing to the side, auto Q auto is perfect here, and you just want to keep smashing autos into him. I don't want to use my W until I have a good good opportunity to use W, charge it, walk away, and get my W off. Okay, um, so this is the way, yeah, we did the way didn't, we need to break down this is that you're holding your W here. I would see a lot of people start with their W. So yeah, why, yeah, so you sort of explain it, but why hold W here? Why is there a better moment to W later than at the beginning? So imagine this guy's full HP, right? And I W, I w him. The stun is like going to be 0.75 seconds because, well, two things. Like you, the, the, the stun gets longer as it, as you, as you hold it. And the other thing is if he um, cancels me out of my W, well, I don't get my W at all. Um, so I want to make it to where if this guy's half HP and I can W him, we can actually one shot him to where he can't flash away. He can't do anything. He actually will just die like straight up. I think that's actually what happens here. He's stunned, yeah, and my Samir just one-shots one -shot him. him. Yes. Yeah. So, you normally only want to stun him when he's below half HP, unless you, you only time you're starting with a W is when you can get a full charge W off, or if you're like 1v1-ing and you know the fight will go for a long time. But my idea is I'm only going to get ever get one W usage in this fight. Yeah, so let's definitely pay attention to your W and E usage later in these fights, because I think that's obviously a huge part, it sounds like, with Champ Master with this champion. Oh, the Q totally. sounds really s s simple. It's like, okay, always try and do auto, Q, auto, because Q is an auto reset. Yes. Oh, no, the, the W is an auto reset, actually. Sorry, the W is an auto reset, right. yeah. Um, but maximizing your your Q in between your auto attacks is yes, really yes. important. But for the passive, and your Q just does a lot of damage. It actually does an insane amount of damage. So you can see I have 3,000 gold, um, mm -hmm. but they're they're dead. So I'm trying to get as much as advantage as I can in this game state, and also they couldn't make mistakes here, um, and like lucky for us, like they they're dying. Challenger player Dave Bond is making this game losable for them, right? So people will make mistakes no matter who it is. Faker could be in this game and he could be making some similar mistakes. Uh, that's just... I don't know about that power. Yeah, power... <laughs> yeah the guard. Maybe not fake. Faker's but maybe. Maybe not <laughs> Faker. Sure, sure, sure. No, I'm, I'm uh, sure that's the case as well. Yeah. Uh, but you can see here, again, like, I'm, I'm trying to see, like, maybe this guy face checks me, and I can get his kill. Like, I'm skipping all the camps here. I'm, I'm dropping wards to make sure he's not on vision. Like, maybe he'll come. Maybe he'll go. He'll go kill himself. Um, I don't think he does. Oh, there he actually does. He actually does. Wow. Okay. Um, but you can see how I'm putting myself in these really good positions to catch these guys making mistakes. All right, cool. So you're playing this fight really slow here, even though you're really fed here. So what's the threat? Why, why, what's the threat here? You're sort of saying. As as sad as it as sad as it is, I am strong, but they are just stronger. Their 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 champs are just way too strong right now. Um, if I was this fed and they weren't as fed, then obviously I would have more angle to just go forward. But just playing Viego in general, you don't want to like go too fast. Going nice and slow is very, very, very key to play Viego. Um, you never want to rush things. Uh, in general, this is true, but especially for Viego. So you're talking about more like timing, because the resets are so important, timing your fights is just so critical. Yes. To get those resets. That was close. Yeah, you'll see here, it was, it was very, very close, and I'm very sad. Um... But just like, like I think if I played this fight like even a fraction better, you know, I could have swung the entire game. We could have gotten Baron here if we won this. Mm. Um, things can things change like drastically. Um, if my if I eat in a better position, if I mean, she flash, like missed my Q, right? Like this guy actually would have been dead if I didn't miss my Q. There's so many small things here that I could have changed. But in a high intensity, high pressure game, like it's expected to not do too amazing in these fights. But I at least put myself in a state where, yes, I could carry this game, I could carry these team fights. Um, so that's step one in, in messed up games like these. To put yourself in a good position. 
All right, so they get Baron. So yeah, so in terms of key targets, so again, you know Kaiser has no flash again for another four and a half minutes at this point. Is that again a priority in the targets in the fights? But oh, or absolutely. are you sort of just looking to kill whoever you want, or and then you can um, reset and kill her after? Yeah, in the fights, if I, if I see Kaiser messing up, I'll for sure be like as aware as possible. Um, but you can see, like, like I'm, I'm always trying to pick off these inters on the side because they will be inters. I'm not doing my blue buff. I'm not doing my wolves. I'm not interacting with the whole group of the whole bunch of people. I'm catching the inter on the side because there will be an inter most of the time. So killing people in the side lanes is always a good way to get kills as a yeah. jungler. Yes, especially in games where you're losing. If I was ahead in this game and I wanted to it's fight, I would go mid here to fight. 5v5, mm. let's go fight. 4v4, whatever. Uh, but because we're so behind, what I what I have to go through the side in order to, to, to win. So, like, you can see how crazy these guys are playing. Like, they already got the inhib here. There's no reason for them to be here. Um, but they are still here. Kind of get outplayed here. But it's okay. Like, we didn't lose the game, right? So... Yep, one in Hib for looks like the entire duration of the Baron. And because you got those early dragons, I guess you're not in threat of Dragon Soul here as well. Yes, so exactly. Those exactly. early dragons helped a lot to sort of just be more comfortable winning a couple more fights. And you'll you'll see here, this was all because of what my Samir did. He he he's a pro player in the past. So although he's in thing, like he's not a bad player. Uh he made a good play on mid lane and he made this game like even better. Like he solo killed the Kaisa. But just keeping strong mental for yourself. I, I swear has the has the positive energy to where if your teammate wants to win even a little bit, they'll step it up, um, and and they'll play. So he was he was three and ten and he was able to solo kill their their Kaisa. So luckily, that made the game a lot a lot easier. So we get another dragon. So I guess you're really starting to regain control of the game at this point. So. Would you, would you call Viego a scaling champion? Like, where what would you sort of call Viego? Where would he fit? Or is he just an all-round mid-game champion? I think he's best in the mid-game for sure. I think he doesn't get outscaled too much. The big the big problem with Viego is he gets like outranged. Um, so if they have champions like Azir that can has an insane amount of range, like you'll be really pretty you'll be pretty sad as Viego in the late game. But just generally speaking, like I think Viego's just a solid champ. Like all throughout the game, early, mid, late. Um, he's just a solid champ. So yeah, the 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 my ADC and I, we we wanted to fight on this mid wave pretty badly. We got one, but honestly, this was just I think this was kind of emotional for me. Um, and my ADC, like if I let my ADC die and I lived here, um, it would have been even better. Um, but um, yeah, like I, I, I ended up making some poor decisions here. Like, I should just leave instead of fighting. Well, it looks like they're trying to end the game maybe here with two people dead. Yeah. There's a uh, surrender vote once again. <laughs> another surrender vote, yep. Luckily, I, I think I think it's very hard for them to end the game. We have three up. I mean, the wave was far and we it would be very close. So they go for side turret. Pink Ward is, is, is putting in the work now. Pink Ward Shaco is crazy. I like the patience there on the Aatrox E. You wanted to E over the wall with Aatrox so you could hold your R for the damage on the yes, Z. Yes, yes. Everything about this champ, I will say, is just like the, the more patient you are, the more relaxed you are, the easier the game will play out. Um, You can see me here. I'm, I'm trying to drag him into the, the, the pike Smart. or the, the Shaco thing. Shaco boxes. He, he went in. So... Is level so, 16 important on Viego or doesn't no, really matter? No, 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 it doesn't really matter. No, not on Viego. It's good for the stats. It's good for the like le like leveled up alts. Like it's a it's it's obviously good, 
but it's not something that like I would want to play for permanently. Uh, unlike Cartus, you know, like if Cartus level 16 is a big difference. Cow level 16, Cassim level 16. Yeah. Oh, so Ari's bots, I'm assuming they're going to pressure Baron here. Yeah. So you're looking for a flank. So, so yeah, in terms of approaching fights as well, do you really like flanks? Do you want to just go front to back? Is it all just situational? So front to back is normally good because if the if this guy, like, if Aatrox got hit by Nautilus Hook, he would actually just get one shot by the Samir and I. Um, I would only ever flank if I'm going for their, like, back line. But normally you don't have to on Viego. You kill their front line and the game is just very solid. So we end up getting engaged on really quick here, and the fight goes pretty bad. Um, I ended up almost right. killing that guy, yeah, but the fight wow. came. Um, the game is not lost here, but we're going to lose another Baron. You can see I'm kind of losing it. Um, Pink Ward does very crazy things to these guys, and he ends up defending the Baron. So, like, things are aligning for this game to go good, um, I will have to say, but... Realistically, like, at the end of the day, like the only reason why I'm 13, 4, and 7 in a game where my ballion has 25 deaths is because I just made good decisions early game and I didn't int um, when I could have. I could have made a lot of bad plays to where I would have died, I would have lost camps, I would have not gotten dragons. Uh, so. All right, here we go. So this fight's going to be really interesting. So yeah, let's pay attention to how you play this fight here. Front to back, flanking who you're looking to go for. So you're just sitting in your E. So yeah, so is this a lot of threat for the enemy? Like, you're just sitting in your E stealth? Yes. Is that they, the idea they, of you They it? don't know which angle I'm coming from. It, mm. it, 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 it applies, like, a, a factor of invis. Like, imagine you, like, you see a Kha'Zix on your screen and it disappears. Like, it's kind of just like, huh, what's going on, you know? Um... So you'll see, like, if I landed my W there on this guy, like, if, if I, I think I could have been in a better position to land that, it would have made a crazy difference. Like, I actually just would have died straight up. Um, I don't know what my RA just did there, honestly. You can see I'm throwing my E in, and I'm just playing Fog. Again, I'm literally just waiting. I'm waiting to see... Yeah, just patience. There's a lot the of patience. If the enemy goes yeah. in... Yeah, if the enemy goes in, if my teammates go in, like, I'm ready. I'm in position, but I'm not... I cannot force anything on Viego. That's not, that's not, my, that's not my champ's job to do, anything, to do any of that. I cannot force anything. So at this point of the game, they're probably tired of this game. They're making mistakes. My teammates are still making mistakes, of course, since the whole game. But the enemy team is actually like starting to lose the game because the items are even-ish. The gold is getting even-ish. Like, it's kind of like a, a, a free-for-all at this point of the game now. It's like no one's no one's really has a crazy, crazy advantage. Oh, you missed the W there. You tell me W is useful. Perry, you just kill, kill this guy without I mean, w. okay, I wouldn't have even needed to the ult if I landed a W. That's true, that's true. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I will say, I am a Viego, I love Viego, but I miss a lot of Ws, and I would love to fix that, but it, it, it's hard sometimes, it's hard. Yeah, so at this point of the game, I would say, like, Jungling, it's less about jungling. It's more just about team fighting, playing, playing your champ, playing the the fight well. Um. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this fight. How could you play this fight better here, Perry? What's the th thought process here? So, you looks like you're doing a front to back here. I mean, it looks like you guys thought you had. I guess you missed the R there. 
Yeah, it was pretty close. I could have flash R'd, potentially, to play for- Nah, no, no, I, I, I would say- I would say using too many tools like that on Viego is too much. Like, what I did was fine, I think. I think one yeah. thing I could have done better here is I could have flashed that- that Aatrox thing. I could have went to the side. Um, getting hit by the Aatrox- like, getting hit by so many abilities like this when I have tools to avoid it is, like, really, really important. Um... Our Samira goes crazy, and, well, so does our Sheku. So, we got- it ended up being a decent fight. Um, I was pretty useless, I will say. But would you ever build Guardian Angel? Um, I don't see any Guardian Angel on Viego on your builds. Um, I think sometimes, but honestly, it's like not that good of. It's not that that. It's like if you're ever dying to Guardian Angel, the fight is probably already lost. Got um, it. That makes sense. So getting stats is just better because GA is not like good stat. <laughs> good stats so you can see something that I, i've been doing a bit this game as well not too much but um something i tend i tend to do is just use my pings a lot i, I try and I'm, I'm learning how to get better at it but literally pinging your teammates has so much value not in a negative way not question mark pinging them but telling them which objective to go for which turret to go for like when to back out when to go forward um those pings are very valuable like like here i just ping like cautious because i don't mm -hmm. want them to end here um so you'll see that you'll see um uh, you'll see uh, you see that from a lot of high low players. Uh, they use their they use their pings a good amount. Even me typing here, I'm telling him to hook anyone. We'll literally kill whoever. Their pike ended up inting. I think that kind of just swings the whole fight around. I think I I I get a little too excited, so I do this. Um, you can see you can see my face too. I'm like shit. I, I mean, I, I fucked up here, guys. Fuck. I'm sorry. But our Samira clutched up. Uh, one thing, like you, you cannot make mistakes that I I just made right there in messed up games like these. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's that that was the game. It was a crazy crazy game. So looking at this last fight here. So yeah. So again, I guess it's easy to get. I mean, I guess everyone would do this, right? Two people are dead, so you think you've won the fight, right? But then they still have damage, yeah, but... Yeah, I mean, you've been they... patient the whole game here, Perry. It's just like this one moment here, you know? So, I, I always call these, like, these are honest deaths. This is an honest mistake, you know? Yeah, like, I can yeah. see all the intention there. Yeah. Uh, but, like, like this, 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 like, if I, you know, if I just hit the Aatrox, I made it very easy, like, it wouldn't be this close. And I would have won the game, like, just like that. So, like, if I were to say, like, something I need to improve on, it's just, like, you know, making sure I'm as disciplined, as I'm patient, and, like, you know, just... Sticking to fundamentals at the end of the day, like, we'll win more if you play the fundamentals uh, of the game. So. And taking high percentage plays looks like you're a big fan of that, especially yes. in the early stages of the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the last question I want to ask you here, Perry, I love talking about, because uh, Champion Master is such an important aspect of the game. Talk about your learning journey of Viego. Was there... Was there moments that it like clicked? Were there moments where you're like, I'm just not playing this champion anymore? Sort of walk through like getting to this point here with Viego, like your your journey on learning this champion. Um, yeah, so for Viego, I think, you know, when the champ first came out, it was awesome. I think at the same time, like I was very unfamiliar with playing other champions. So, you know, there were times where I'm like, wow, I did not know this champion does this. And I, I learned from it. But it was also very hard, because when I would transform into a champion I had no idea how to play, I would probably lose the fight. I mean, I would end up losing the fight. So there were times where, like, I, I didn't like the champ. There were times where I was like, you know, maybe this champ is actually really good, because I can learn other champs at the same time, funnily enough. Um, but at the end of the day, like, like, I think, you know, I lost the, 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 the want to play this champ um, every now and then. Like, I would just play other stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, I just feel like Viego is the champ for me. Like... He's just a fun champion. He has, he's able to do things at every single point of the game, um, no matter what stage it is. You're able to change fights, like no other champ is able to. Um, and you know, like I think at the end of the day, like you shouldn't be afraid to like make mistakes and like lose games, uh, even if it like feels like shit. Uh, that's one thing on Viego. Like you will probably lose a lot, especially if you play against champions you don't normally play against. Um, and you transform into them, like, you're going to, you're going to be unsure as to what's going on. And that's okay, because that's just learning. Uh, it's literally League of Legends, it's learning Viego. Uh, so yeah. 
All right, Perry, any last, uh, any plugs, socials, stream? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I stream, here? I stream on Twitch. Uh, this game was streamed. It was a banger game. Um, it's just Perry Jung. Uh, other than that, I mean, catch me, catch me on there. And, you know, like, I, I think that in the future, if we ever get, get some of this content going, like, I, I, I enjoyed doing this too. So. Awesome. Yeah, I'll chuck all your links in the description below for people to check out your stream. Awesome. I think you'll, you you have a YouTube channel. I'll tag that in the YouTube as well. But I think you've just uploaded some shorts or whatever to that. Yeah, so I'm exactly still shorts, Still yeah. new, new to the, the YouTube game. Yeah. All right, thanks, Perry, for coming on here. Very educational. Hopefully it's helped a lot of Viego players or maybe motivated people to start playing Viego. Definitely made this champ look really fun here, Perry. Yeah, I thanks mean... Thanks again. I, 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 hope, I hope it helps. Um, I love Viego. I stream a lot of Viego, so, yeah. Great. All right, we'll see you guys in my next video.